Good morning, everybody. Hooray, we're awake. Thank you for coming to BT Centre. Welcome uh, to BT. We're very proud to host the uh, IPv6 forum running their first IPv6 security um, focus group. Um, probably expecting a few more people to turn up during the day. Um, I just wanted to say uh, welcome and hello to everybody and, and just give you a very short update on where we are in BT on, on IPv6. So um, pretty much the whole of our network's done and, and we've kind of plateaued at, a, at a, I think about four or five million um, customers that have been using V6. The, where we are now is some of the legacy devices we've got in the network. So some of you may know we have Hub 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 eventually. Um, and Hub 6, or Smart Hub as we call it, supports V6. Uh, Hub 5, um, we're imminently about to release a V6 version of the code for that. Um, Hub 4, it's looking like we probably won't be able to do it. Um, still working on it, but these boxes are, um, they've got limited memory, they've got limited processing power, running dual stack on them is quite um, memory intensive. So we're still working on it, but you know, anyone who turns up with a V6 the device that supports prefix delegation, you plug it in and it just works. Um, I think there's a piece of work to do with some, still with some of the CPE guys. Um, because we have a lot of feedback from um, on our forums about people buying, you know, off-the-shelf stuff in PC world that doesn't support prefix delegation, um, and you know they want to do a different approach to V6. So I think there's still a piece of work that, that we need to do that with some vendors, which we're, we're which we're kicking off. But we've also enabled a lot of our business voice services. Everything that we're building business voice now is dual stack, um, and it's actually proving to be a really valuable um, investment in terms of being able to connect customers um, and, and, and it, this is more at the business level and educating them around the, the advantages of V6, which for many corporates, V6 is like a big scary, oh my God, do we have to do this? But I'm starting to see from some, some of our big customers, you know, much more of a will to do this. So. This is why I think this, this is why we were keen to support the security workshop because one of the big barriers to V6 adoption is this kind of fear of the unknown. Um, and, and, you know, hopefully by working together, we can put some of those myths or issues to bed um, and get this uh, rolling out. So thanks for coming. Um, we've got lunch here today later on. Um, please feel free to use the facilities. Um, if there's anything you need, um, let us know. Uh, I'm going to hand over to Victoria. Uh, sorry, Veronica, who's going to run. Um, who's going to run the? Uh, so, so it's a gag between me and and, and Veronica. Um, who's going to run today's event? Um, and we hope you enjoy it. And and you know we're open to host more of these events at, at BT Centre. So thank you very much. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. It's great to see you all here. So. Uh, as Neil mentioned, we have got 168 people registered, and we are sitting here tightly hoping that not everybody turns up, but if they do, we'll be very cosy. Um, well, first thanks to Neil and to BT, because this is unprecedented. BT in general over the years have always been criticized about their support for IPv6, but last autumn when our attendees at the annual meeting put their hands up and said, well, we want IPv6 security focused workshop, Neil said, I will host it. I was like, well, let's see. And he really kept his word. So really, thank you very much to Neil and to BT for providing us with this fantastic facility. I also want to thank very much to Tim, who is sitting here at the front, Tim Chow, my co-chair of the UK IPv6 Council, and Nick Heatley, who is uh, at the registration desk, because these guys have done a great job while I was um, on holidays last week, so they relieved me of the last minute stress of preparations for this event. So really, thank you very much, Tim. We never had such a fast ramp up for any of our IPv6 events in the three years that Council exists. So just to give you an idea for our annual meetings, which happen usually in autumn, we would see about 80 to 100 people attending. Registration uh, would be like 120, so there would be over 20% dropout. When uh, we opened registration in late May for this event, within three weeks, we had 110 people registered out of uh, capacity for 170. So we were just sitting there wondering what's gonna happen, but we were really pleased because this confirms that the topic is relevant. As Nina said, this is often the obstacle or hurdle that people are um, struggling with 
the security part of IPv6 because there are so many different um, ways the V6 behaves and how it's defined, standardized. And our excellent speakers, they will actually hopefully uncover the myths and help us understand how we can uh, secure IPv6 in our networks. Before I go into the agenda, I just would like to say here that we are looking at running our annual meeting uh, later this year, possibly October, November. And here I would like to um, offer, if anybody would be interested, their company uh, with providing us a venue for this event. We usually have about 100 attendees. Because UK IPv6 Council is completely non-profit, no funding, nothing. We are really just a group of volunteers, people who come together and want to share the knowledge and experience with uh, deploying IPv6. And that way, we believe we are encouraging others to um, get on with things. Uh, so if anybody would be willing to put their hand up and their company to host such a meeting, please come um, during the breaks to me or Tim here at the front and we can discuss it. So now the agenda. Uh, we've got really excellent speakers, I'm really pleased, and it was actually quite easy to find these people and um, they were, every, everybody was very keen to come and talk here and they had to travel from different parts of the world, north of Scotland, with David here, which is, uh, which is sometimes, especially with BA, thinking about striking. And we've got Fernando here who came from Argentina, but he's actually been traveling like half of the world before he came here. So, um, and of course the local people, and I'm very proud and very happy of all the people who are based in the UK because it shows we have the knowledge here. We don't have to rely on bringing people from the outside. We have the knowledge here and this forum is really a platform for sharing the knowledge. So I really want to thank everybody who made the journey, came here and will speak here today. So during the morning session, we will have an um, opening keynote that uh, will be, uh, that will be uh, presented by Dave Harcourt, who is the Chief uh, Security Advisor here at BT. Then we will have um, Richard from uh, National Cyber Security Center giving us their view of practical security architecture design, which I believe it's going to be very interesting. And then we will have David Holder, who will uh, just set the level for everybody on what is IPv6 security. So he will basically talk about the V6 security fundamentals. After the lunch, we will be looking at uh, the practical side of IPv6 security where Fernando, he'll be talking about the various tools. And the interesting thing here with some other people, he developed some hacking tools for uh, attacking IPv6. So it will be also very interesting to see. And then it's going to be Fernando and Tim giving us a brief update about what ITF are doing with regards to securing IPv6. The interesting bit is that ITF meeting is happening next week in Prague. So there's obviously like drafts and things that are going on there. So it'll be good to hear from them about it. And then the final session in the afternoon, the final block basically, uh, will really focus on the practical experience. And again, we've got here people who are local from Claranet and IRC Cloud that will be sharing their own experience with various aspects of V6 deployment. So um, the panel at the end is kind of a little bit of a buffer, but at the same time, if you've got questions and you want to just write them on a piece of paper, put the questions here. You can obviously ask during the sessions, ask the speaker directly, but if you've got more general questions, we will then uh, uh, have a brief panel at the end of the day, and our speakers will be here um, on the podium ready to answer these questions.